Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 34 of the lockdown. And before I get into some of the news that has caught my eye over the last couple of days, I'll firstly say thanks to all of the people that have been leaving comments on the videos, more than 550 on the last video. Thanks to all of the people in the UK that gave us an update situation on what the lockdown is there, and to other people around the world that are letting us know what their individual lockdown situations are like and how they differ from country to country. I had comments from people in Thailand telling us that it's quite strict there. I had somebody from Puerto Rico tell us that they have been in lockdown for the last four weeks and it is quite strict. So let us know how your particular situation is wherever you are in the world. Now again, a big thanks to everybody who has decided to support the channel through a small donation. You can see your names there. Thank you very much for that. Now let's get into some of the news that has caught my attention. The first thing today is that the Prime Minister Sanchez is apparently preparing a new extension of the state of alarm until May the 10th. However, the confinement may be more flexible. So some good news there that there might be some easing to the confinement rules. I'll talk a little bit more about the confinement rules a little bit later in the video and how they might affect different people in different areas around Spain. So stay tuned for that. Now, another piece of news that caught my attention is that the self-employed will receive today a subsidy for cessation of activity. And we can see here that self-employed people who applied for the extraordinary subsidy and have received the approval of the Social Security will receive the aid today. Around 1 million self-employed have requested this subsidy, although it is expected that the number of beneficiaries will end up around 1.4 million. Now, a lot of self-employed people have seen their incomes plummet, and a lot of people have applied for this special subsidy. I'm not sure whether there's gonna be another one next month or not, but if you are self-employed and you haven't applied for the subsidy, it'd be a good idea to get in touch with your gestor or contact the Social Security and see if there are gonna be further measures in place. Now, some bad news here is that the current crisis has condemned four million workers to be mil euristas. Mil euristas is a term that they use in Spain for people that earn around or less than 1,000 euros a month. It has been a bit of a trending topic over the last few years since the last crisis. These mil euristas, as they call them, are a fairly big collective here in Spain. A lot of people complain that it's not a decent salary, that it's not really a living wage, but unfortunately it is a reality that a lot of people in Spain don't earn more than 1,000 euros. And we can see here that another 4 million people are likely to be around this wage bracket in the future. So not good news there. Now there's been some more talk about this minimum basic income that I mentioned a few videos ago, and we can see here that Spain is to launch a minimum living wage for the poorest in May. However, it's been a bit controversial because there hasn't been a lot of agreement inside the government. For example, the Social Security Minister didn't know that the Deputy Prime Minister Iglesias and the Prime Minister Sanchez had presented this to the public. So there has been a bit of an internal squabble. But as we can see here, Spain's government says that it will pay tens of thousands of of the country's lowest income households a minimum living wage starting in May, a campaign promise that has been accelerated because of the massive job losses triggered by the pandemic lockdowns. The socialist-led government estimated that the subsidy would be paid to at least 1 million households on a permanent basis starting in May, but Madrid didn't put a figure on the minimum living wage. So there we go, for all of the people in the comment section that wanted to know a little bit more about this, there you go. According to the government, as of May, this minimum living wage is going to be in place. Now, the government has also added more experts to a task force in order to prepare de-escalation of confinement measures. The group is working on the assumption that changes to the situation will have to be introduced from April the 26th when the current state of alarm ends. Now, I said before that Sanchez is most likely going to extend the lockdown. It's a little bit difficult to get information at the moment because there's a lot of contradicting information. In fact, every newspaper you read seems to contradict another one. So it's a bit difficult to know exactly what's going on. And as we saw before, even inside the government, there's a lot of contradicting going on. So not easy to know exactly what's happening at the moment. But hopefully this task force of experts will be able to ease some of the confinement laws. Apple has come out and said that Spain's confinement is one of the most radical in the world. And another article I saw today regarding what some of the easing to the confinement will look like 
is that schools will most likely remain closed, bars will need to work at half of their normal capacity, and the elderly will be confined for longer. People will need to respect social distance, and that'll be a key in the transition phase that will last for months. So finally, we're starting to get an idea of what this deconfinement will look like. However, there are some local governments, Madrid in particular, who is against the easing of confinement rules for children, and they have given a number of reasons why they advise against children going out onto the street. Now, the mayor of Barcelona came out publicly the other day and said that confinement rules need to be relaxed for children, saying that it is barbaric that children are locked indoors. However, in Madrid, they're saying that children play a key role in the transmission because they rarely manifest symptoms. So again, not clear whether children are going to be able to go outside and practice some form of exercise in the future. Now, let's have a look at some of the comments on the last video. The first one here is from Dave, who says that we have two children now being confined for five weeks. They really need to get out for their own mental health. Is there any mention of this in the news? Now, as we just saw, Dave, there is a lot of mention of this in the news, but unfortunately, it's not clear. We can see that some people are asking for less confinement for children. Some people are saying that it's necessary for children to be able to go outside, to clear their minds, to run around, to get some exercise. And other governments say that no, children need to be confined because they don't show symptoms and most likely will spread the virus to other people. So again, not clear on what's happening here. My son's in the same situation as yours. We do have a bit of a garden, so he can't go outside and kick the football. But he asks every day whether he can go for a ride on his bike or whether he can go for a walk. And it is getting a bit frustrating for him and his mood does go up and down. So hopefully common sense will prevail and children will be allowed to go out into the street. Now, another comment here from Mr. Dog. He says, thanks, Stuart. I can always learn new stuff from your daily recaps. With regards to the schools here in Andalusia, I see parents, including ourselves, complaining that the schools hand out tons of home assignments and tests to pupil these last past weeks, but there are zero online classes. So basically, parents that work from home can now also teach their kids according to the official program, which only makes the burden heavier as we're doing the teachers' jobs as well. Now, I know that there are some schools that have virtual classrooms in place, but I think these are schools with resources. The school that my son goes to is a public school or a state school here in Spain, and they don't have any virtual classroom. And you are right, we are getting emails from teachers every day sending two or three documents, homework documents, that students need to do. And basically, we need to sit down with our son and do the work with them. There's no online teaching going on at my son's schools. Are teachers working? Well, they're putting these documents together and sending it to us, but there is no online teaching going on, at least at my son's school and probably the majority of public schools in the area, if not the rest of Spain. But if the case is different for you and your child goes to a public school here in Spain and they have got some type of virtual classroom situation up or a virtual school through Moodle or something like that, please let me know. And to be honest, it's not difficult for a school to set up a Moodle and teach online, but obviously it hasn't happened yet for a lot of public schools, at least here in Madrid. Another one here from Alex, he's based in Barcelona, and he says that the UK has a lot more freedom. His friends can still drive and go for long walks and socialize. In Barcelona, even leaving your apartment, you will still be fined without documentation, even going to the supermarket. Yeah, that's true, Alex. There's not a lot of things that we can do here in Spain. I envy people in the UK. I envy people in Australia that can still go out. There's another comment here from Philip that says, in the UK, we're confined under our own cognizance, basically. We can go out as much as we like, but we are advised to limit it. Here in Spain, we don't have that freedom. We can only go to the supermarket. We can only go to the pharmacy. The government doesn't seem to trust us with things like this. Now, obviously, there's going to be people that abuse the system, but you have to think that people are responsible and they're not going to go overboard. But obviously, here in Spain, the government doesn't trust people to act responsibly, hence the strict lockdown laws. And in Australia, when I see my sister driving to another part of the city to get takeaway food, I envy that type of behavior, but unfortunately, we don't have it here. Another comment here from Barbers and Bikes, do all you barbers and hairdressers keep working? How has this worked with social distancing? Another comment from Alex P, are barbers open? I could really use a haircut. Now, as you probably noticed, I had a haircut recently, but I cut my hair myself. I took out the clippers and uh, worked away on my hair. That's why it's a bit of a botched job. But hairdressers at home, who can they serve in quarantine? And as we can see here, this sector can provide its activity by going to the homes of groups of vulnerable people and only for washing and cutting and essential hygiene service. 
So the majority of people can't get a haircut. So you're probably gonna to have to do it yourself. Maybe buy some clippers online and take your hair into your own hands, which is what I had to do, unfortunately, because it was getting a bit long. Now, another one here from Michael Alexander. Stuart, thanks for another informative video. I read online in a local English news outlet that the president of the Canary Islands, Senor Torres, has spoken to the Spanish PM, Senor Sanchez, about the possibility of the Canaries coming out of lockdown early because of the low infection rate and its geographical location. I understand that flights and cruises are not coming to the island at present. I would appreciate your thoughts. Now, there is a lot of debate in Spain at the moment that confinement should not be the same for different places. For example, if you're in the Canary Islands, if you're in the Balearic Islands, if you're in the countryside in Granada, why are you having strict lockdown laws? And there is a lot of talk in press at the moment about this. We can see here that confinement cannot be the same throughout Spain. They are measures for cities. The only application model in the entire state causes paradoxes such as being allowed to go to the supermarket or travel by subway, but if you live in a country area, you're not allowed to go to a plot to irrigate or walk in the field. So there are a lot of contradictions as to whether the central government is going to listen to each individual autonomous community based on cases in geographical location waits to be seen. But I think it's common sense that confinement should be different according to where you are in Spain. But we'll wait and see what happens with regard to that. Now, another one here from Emlyn who says, that my wife went out for our weekly shop to the supermarket here in Tatana Murcia. No problems and the shelves are full. She also popped into the farmacia and bought face masks. Again, no problem. They had plenty. I'm in day 33 without leaving home, but I'm lucky living up a mountain with a garden and views. Feel sorry for those in dark flats in the cities. Yeah, thanks for that, Emlyn. I went to the supermarket yesterday and there were plenty of things available on the shelves. No problems there. I also went to the pharmacy to pick up a couple of masks. And I have heard that there are some local councils around Spain that are giving masks to residents. So it seems that the mask shortage is finally over and people are now able to get their hands on one. Although they are expensive, I bought three for 23 euros. So a little bit expensive, but according to the lady in the pharmacy, I can use it 15 times and I'll probably try to get a few more uses out of it than that. Now one here from Nika, she says, I watch every single one of your updates. They're very informative. I'm Slovenian and my boyfriend is Spanish. I have no idea when we'll be able to see each other. I bet many people are facing a similar problem now. Yeah, Nika, unfortunately, I imagine that there are a lot of people around the world that are separated from their partners or separated from their friends. And it's all something that we have to go through at the moment. Fortunately, we have a lot of technology in place nowadays that makes it easier to keep in contact with people. You can constantly message someone. You can get on a Zoom chat. You can get on a WhatsApp chat, use Skype. I remember when I first came to live in Spain many, many years ago, the only way that I could talk to my family at home was to go to a public telephone. There was no face-to-face -face communication back in those days. But fortunately, nowadays, Nika, we can see people face-to-face. -face. Now, I know it doesn't help being physically apart from someone, but uh, it's better than nothing. And and finally, one here from that wit, they say, Stuart, you're looking a bit pale. How are you personally holding up? Do you have a terrace or balcony where you can take some sun in? Now, the truth is that I always look a bit pale. This is my normal complexion. And uh, the truth is that I've got my ancestors to blame for that. My grandmother, when she was alive, went back and looked at our family tree and found out that the majority of people that went to Australia came from Ireland, Scotland, and the north of England. So that's the reason for my complexion. I do have an outside area and I can go outside and get some sun, but I always wear factor 50 on my face because basically too much sun is not good for me. So on that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. I'll let you guys debate the situation out as always. Tell us about your lockdown restrictions. Are they stricter than here in Spain or do you have more freedoms? Let us know. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego. Stay safe.